This is just getting weirder and weirder. Itman Baul Menukaste Be Zia Nehola Onum. What? Okay, I'm not going to do the voices for these guys because I honestly have no idea what the hell they're saying. I guess this one over here is like the king or something? Or queen, maybe. Oh, here we go. Welcome, creature. My name is Zia. Do you speak human? Oh my goodness, yes! Finally, words I understand! My good friend Rai told me that you showed him an illustration. With four humans and a cat. I assume you're one of them. A little girl. Please forgive my good friend if he scared you. We have never seen a human looking like a tree before. Well, nor have I, to be honest. Let's see. Ooh, help me, please. I'm a girl. <laughs> no need to speak, my child. The seed will show me everything. The seed? Alright. <laughs> okay. Ouch. How lazy is that? Can't even be bothered to bend down. Hmm, let me see. You are good. No doubt about that. The seeker of the truth. Very common of the Bow family tree. Ah, your name is Fran. You are the girl with a passion for life. I see great love towards this little creature standing next to you. A cat. Protector of gates. Interesting. Protector of gates, eh? Okay. You can see all that? In a seed? Be quiet. I see something else. The seed doesn't hide anything. I see a world nobody should see. Nobody except for one. Go on, what do you mean? What do you mean by except for one? You mean the monster? You are not supposed to be here, Fran. That is the only thing I can tell you, my child. Okay, well, you know what? Can you help me? Turn me back into a human? We can't let you leave now. It's too dangerous for us. You should never have been aware of our existence. There must be a way. Am I dead or something? Dead? What do you mean by that? You know, when you no longer exist. Besides, it's not normal to be a tree. I must be dead. Death is nothing more than the absence of love. Once you can't feel love, you die. Even if your body still walks. Well, you know what? I Please, help me, help me get back home. Little cat, come closer. Let me see you. What is your name? My name is Mr. Midnight. That is indeed a very pretty name. Do you think Fran should go back home? Yes, I do, sir. Show us the way back home. I implore you. Uh, I have a question. Are, are you the king? <laughs> you are hilarious. Yes, I am the king. The king of Ithaster. Oh, what an honor, your highness. Uh, by the way, I, I like your leaves. They're pretty. <laughs> the fuck is going on, honestly? Please, will you help me? Why is this need of you going home so great? The seed told me your story. You don't have much to go back to. There are many reasons, sir. But the most important is my aunt. She will protect me. I want to feel that somebody cares about me. I feel confused almost all the time and I want to be someplace where I feel at home, sir. I see. You are very brave. I just want to go home. Please help me. There are things I cannot do. But I will help you. I will lead you to the door that will take you home, but it's your own task to walk through it. Really? Oh, thank you so much! And, and where is this door, sir? We'll talk about that later. First things first, you must be able to talk and walk on this land. Yes, sir, that would be very great. <laughs> very great. I'm afraid I won't be able to bring your human body back. Only the great wizard can do that. But we'll talk more about him after the procedure. You must first understand our language. How will I ever understand your language? Eat this fruit. Do I consume the knowledge of the language then? Uh, maybe. Your, your ears and tongue will be able to understand. But not your eyes. That means you won't be able to read. Don't worry about that. I can always ask. Excuse me. Do you understand what I say, human lady? Yes, I do. And you sound so kind. <laughs> this is incredible. Do you understand my kitty? 
I didn't. Your Highness, I demand one fruit for myself. You don't need the fruit, Mr. Midnight. Our land is based on fragrances and sound. You'll see everything is your own world very soon. No doubt about that. You'll do fine, Kitty. And, sir, do you know why I became a tree? Yes, but I don't think I'm the right one to give you the answers. Now, it's time for the procedure. Are you afraid of heights? Well, <laughs> there we go! It depends on the height. It depends on the height. Why? Take her upstairs immediately. Oh dear. Okay. Where are you taking me? What are you going to do to me? Oh dear. Yeah. This procedure might be a little bit dark. I don't know why. It just feels like it might be. I'll be waiting for you, Fran. I love you. Oh dear. This game is so odd right now. I mean, last couple of videos, we dove off the diving board of insanity, and I don't think we've reached the bottom yet. What's this now? A luck dragon tadpole thing? Okay. What voice shall I give to him? Hmm. Good day. My name is Palantras, and I'm your doctor today, at your humble service. Are you the emergency case? Wow, amazing. What a huge, beautiful, fluffy thing. <laughs> Excuse me? Oh, I'm sorry. It's just that I've never seen anything like you before. I'm still trying to understand that all of this is real. My name is Fran. I'm a human girl. The king sent me here to get some arms and legs so I can go home. Oh, a human. I think we can get you a pair of arms and legs. But we'll have to travel a little bit further in order to fix that. Are you ready to enter the paws of the beast? What beast? Me. I'm the beast. Let's go. <laughs> this must be going on inside her head. It absolutely must be. Here we are. Wow, this place is so beautiful and peaceful. I wish I could be here forever. Really? I think you get tired of it after a day, really. Thank you. This is my home. This is where I was born. The spirit of the great Valakus created it. Oh my goodness. It has the purest water in the whole universe. Oh wow, that sounds amazing! So, um, yeah, who is the Great Velocus? Yeah, who is the Great Velocus? Haven't you heard about the Five Realities? Uh, no, I must have missed that class at school. He is the king of the First Reality. A long time ago, he was at war with the darkness, and one day he fell. He fell so badly. His heart was broken. He was all alone. But he came to Ithaster, and his blood made this water pink. That is why it's so pure. It's a very long story. Wow, that sounds grand. I mean, I didn't know about other realities. And how is it that you're here? What brought you to Ithaster? My kitty and I were on our way back home. I was so happy to see him and hug him again, but then we fell. The big monster that follows me did this. He broke the bridge. He wants me dead. Who would like to see you dead? That sounds terrible. I prefer not to talk about this. But, Sir Doctor, do you know why I became a tree? Yes. Sometimes our wishes are so strong that they become true. You did this in order to keep yourself alive. Think about it this way. Your human body was destroyed. But you wanted to keep being Fran. You wanted to keep your life, so you took on this empty shell to maintain all your precious memories with you. It is actually the first time I've seen a human using a tree as a chrysalis. But it's dangerous to have you here. It makes our land vulnerable. I did this to myself? Wow! But, Palantras, sir? How? I, I didn't know I was doing anything. You really didn't know what you were doing? I see. Well... When you travelled to Ithaster, you opened a door between your reality and ours. And with this door open, unexpected creatures can also enter our reality. And if that happens, the balance will be tainted. And there is only one who would like to poison the second reality. The monster. The terrible black. Ah, oh, he's getting all emotional now! I can't see this happening again. 
I just can't. Don't be sad, Doctor. I'm very sad for what I did. I, I didn't I didn't mean to. Oh, little girl. You were so nice. And you don't have anything to be sorry for. I think you're very special. But let's concentrate on your arms and legs. Alright? Mm, yes, Doctor. Okay. Soldier of the sun. Spirit of the water. Give Fran her arms and legs. Okay, that seemed to work. Still made of wood, though. How do you feel, Fran from Ithister? Wow, I feel like a beautiful tree. I have leaves. I'm glad you like it. I told you we would fix it. Well, you only did half a job, really. I mean, it's not exactly skin, is it? This water is magical. It can fix anything. Anything? Do you think it could fix my mummy and daddy? What do you mean? Fix them? What's wrong with them? N nothing Doctor. Thank you very much for helping me. You're the best Doctor I've ever had. And you're fluffy and beautiful. I had another Doctor before. His name was Doctor Dean, but he was an evil old man. An old man? Hmm. I bet he wasn't that bad. Maybe he was just following the rules. Let's go now. I'll leave you at the station. And off we go again. This is blowing my mind right now. We are so far away from reality right now. Well, we're in another one, aren't we? We're in the second reality, I think. Here we are again. Shows you are the king what a nice Ithostenes you've become. I guess that's the Ithostar people. His name, anyway. Thank you again, Doctor. You have to meet my kitty someday. That would be lovely. I'll see you soon. Goodbye. And off the flying tadpole goes. Okay. But here we go, I can actually move of my own accord right now. I don't have to be, you know, dragged along in a flying boat or anything. You fluffy kitty. Ah, do you like that? <laughs> here I am. Fran, my dear, you've got leaves on your head. How pretty. <laughs> oh, let me see you. What a great Ithostenes you've become. Thank you, King Sir. The Doctor is incredible. He made magic with the water. But he was sad. He told me many things, but I didn't quite understand. Don't worry. Polytrus will be fine. I know the reasons. We have some problems to solve, but there's nothing you should worry about. Let's talk about how you can get back home. Right? Yes, please. You said something about a great wizard. Yes. The great wizard is the only one who is able to bring your human body back. And he has the stones that can open the... <laughs> Sorry, I uh, I had a weird mental image then, but apparently he has the stones that can open the door. That will lead me home. Where is the wizard? What stones? This land is full of things I don't understand. Haha, <laughs> you haven't even gone outside the castle and you already want to know everything? That's the passion I was talking about. Have patience, Fran. The great wizard lives in the great mountain Cotrum. But we haven't seen him for a while now. Find him and everything will be just fine. Why haven't you tried to find the Great Wizard yourself? Well, we don't need to. It's very logical. You see, we don't need a wizard to perform magic or prepare potions. We can do that ourselves. The wizard's most valuable task is, is to protect the stones that open the door. I see. So the stones are like keys. And where is this mountain, you said? You'll have to ask around. Follow the signs. I have to go now. But I'll be back in time to help you with the door. Have a great... <laughs> oh, there he is. Have a great Ithista day. And good luck finding the great wizard. Thanks, king of the tree people. Wow, did you see that huge fluffy creature, Kitty? That's Polontrus. He fixed me. Yes, it's certainly very fluffy. Oh, I forgot. Here's your purse. Ah, there we go. All the items. Oh, thank you, Kitty. Did you see my pills anywhere? I don't think you need them anymore. I think you've overdosed so much, it's all just consistently madness. I don't think so. Maybe they're on the other side of the lake, next to your clothes. Um, well, we have other things to do anyways. We have to find the wizard. Of course you do. Yes, the king says something about a mountain too. Yes, Mountain Cotrum. The great wizard lives there. Let's go. Okay. 
I can't believe this, honestly. This game has made such a turn. Um, okay. Let's go this way, then. Let's go left. There's no pills to worry about, so I suppose, you know, there's not going to be two versions of every place. Is this the guy that gave me a lift? To the, uh, to the station? <laughs> you see that guy <laughs> going fast on a flying boat? Anyway. No, no. You can't get in. It's closed. Uh, I, I didn't know. What's behind this passage? Well, the library, of course. But it's closed. Come back in fall or winter. Then it'll be open. Hey, aren't you the talking tree I took to see Polontris? Yeah, that's me. Polontris gave me arms and legs. Yes, also a head. That's very positive. <laughs> What's that mean? <laughs> yes, but why is the library closed, sir? Well, that's logic. As the sun goes around the second moon of Ithista, we open. Only then the real knowledge will be learned. And that only happens in fall and winter. Oh. So you don't learn anything while you're in summer or spring? Of course we learn. We learn all the time. I'm learning now that you like to ask many questions. Well, I'm, I'm curious, that's why. Everything looks so different here in Ethister. I guess you're not from around here. Well, I hope to see you soon. Yeah, uh, thank you, sir. Bye. Okay. Uh, so, do I just wait around here for a few months and then go in and learn some things? I don't know. Let's uh, let's keep moving on. Okay. What's this? It's reminded me a lot of um, Skyloft, actually, from Skyward Sword, Legend of Zelda. Do I? Oh, I thought I was just going to jump off then. Wow, this is a bit scary, but it's so beautiful. <laughs> the cat's just relaxing at this point. Taking in the breeze. Okay. Um... So, I can talk, right? And, you know, I can hear everything and hear the speech. I don't think I can read, though. No, that's still just mumbo-jumbo to me. I don't understand. Maybe the, uh, the bug over here can tell me what that means? Hello, sir. Um... Are you a guard? Yes. Talkative. <laughs> okay. Um, can you tell me about Mountain Cotram? Yeah, do you know where the mountain is? Yes. Oh, okay. Where is it then? <laughs> Look at Mr. Midnight, just sitting back, licking his bollocks, acting very cat-like. He can tell me where the mountain is, though, so yes, please tell me. Hmm. The mountain Cotram is only in wintertime. What? Wintertime? What are you talking about? Hmm, of course. Wintertime. What do you think? Well, I, yeah, I can't wait for winter. Looks like spring or summer right now. No, you don't wait for it. You go there. What? How? Ah, sorry. I'm no good at explaining things. Go down the stairs and then straight. We'll find a clockmaker. He can explain things, I think. He tried with me before. Alright. Thank you, sir. Okay. Come on, Mr. Midnight, we've got to find a, uh, a clockmaker. So, let's go down the stairs. And then he said, go straight. Alright, Let, let's see. There's a, there's a signpost here. I suppose I can read it. Oh, I guess I can figure out what these mean. That looks like it could be the mountain. Maybe that's where Mountain Cotter is. I guess that book means the library, and that... Well, that looks like the sign that I just saw. And this, that looks like a market stall or something. Anyway, uh, what do we got here? Some sort of information thing to have a look at, probably? Oh, okay, we got a map. Oh, that's where we just came from, I think. We just came down here, so we're, we're here right now, I think? Yeah, that's the castle, so we're about there. That's the ground! There's a tree over there, a very big tree. Is that Mountain Cotram? Could be. There's the floating island where Polontris lives. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, there's some more ground over there. We've got a boat. There's a couple more islands as well. I guess we should probably just explore, shall we? But let's let's see if we can find this clockmaker first. So let's just keep going straight. So let's go this way. Oh my goodness! <laughs> this is this is beyond weird, right? Okay. Uh, no, we got like a blacksmith. Someone selling. What? What are you selling? What a tiny shop! 
and it smells really funny. Let's uh, let's have a chat, shall we? Hello. Ah, uh, who's there? Who? Can't you see me? Oh, no, I, I see a little. You have four eyes. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Um, what are you selling? Plobbers. Do you want to smell plobbers? What are plobbers? They look like coconuts. Oh, okay. It's poo. <laughs> They're not coconuts. He's like a dung beetle then, right? Like in the toilet? Wow, I thought it was really bad to eat poo. And so you should. It's very yummy, he says. We love it here. It makes everything grow and shine. <sighs> Good luck with the plobbers. Bye. Right, he's obviously not the clockmaker. This guy's a blacksmith. This guy's selling his wares, his threads. He's a clothier. Uh, let's keep going. Uh, oh, here we go. This could be the guy. Let's have a let's have a chat. Hello. What are you doing? Uh, working on my clock. Uh, here we go again. Then I'm looking for a wizard to turn me back into a human. No miss. I do clocks. I fix clocks. I listen to clocks. Tick tock. Okay. Do you know about a mountain? The mountain cotrum only exists in winter time. Otherwise, it's just a regular mountain. Again, I can't wait for winter. The king said that the wizard be in mountain cotrum. Okay, you don't need to wait for winter to come. That's absurd. Time is an infinitely layered reality. Is it really? Okay, so what should I do? That sounds great. What should I do then? Go to the big clock and change the season. Just change it. I can just change the season on a whim. Where's the clock? Well, go towards the castle, but turn to your left when you see the stairs. You'll find a big clock on the tree. Good luck. Thank you, sir. You are very nice. Bye. Okay, Kitty, let's, I guess, let's go back on ourselves then. Again? And then go up here. That's where the sign was pointing, right? Yeah, up there is the mountain and a tree. And it's going to be that tree, I guess. Here we go. So this is where I changed the season? This is a very odd clock. Where are the numbers? It has symbols and colours, but it doesn't seem to show the time. Ah, here we go. I think, I've, I think I've cracked it. Oh no. It sounds like something broke. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. But how does it work? Maybe I can ask for help. Maybe I should. Well, uh... Can we go back on ourselves? Yep. Let's go back on ourselves because, you know, we just spoke to a clockmaker. Perhaps he can fix the clock as well. Hi there. Sir, I have a little problem. Called Mr. Midnight. No. Yes, I don't have any. The big clock on the tree, it's broken. I can't make it work. Please help me. A broken clock? That's a disgrace. Poor clock. You have to help me. Please fix this for me. I beg you. I have to go home. I never fix a clock for nothing. Otherwise, my life's time goes to waste. Okay, what do you mean? <clears throat> I charge one big golden coin per clock. Time is gold, you know. Okay, I don't have any coins. I certainly don't have any. I probably should in my purse, but I don't. And no clock will ever be fixed, he says. Uh, will it do it as a favor? How, how do I get a coin? Look, there's a snail that loves to give gold away. Talk to him. A snail that likes to give gold away. Now I've now I've heard everything. <laughs> okay, that's great. Thank you, sir. Bye. Okay, um, let's let's look for a snail then. <laughs> oh, that's twisted. Taking a ladybug is that? Okay, that's a toy, not an actual ladybug. This is weird as hell. It's like the the vegetables and the insects get along so very nicely in this. Second reality. Alright. This is the edge then. Oh, that's is that the snail? There's a big... Yeah, there's a big sack of coins. Hello. Good day, young one. Okay. Uh, what are you doing? Giving away money, I hope. The war is about to start. And I can't see meaning in the meaningless. What do you mean? Join me, young one. You'll be rewarded with one golden coin if you come back alive. Join you? Join you where? The game is about to begin. 
You are the Kamalas, I am the Valakas. Black and white, as shadows and light. It, it's a board game? Right, yeah. Maybe some sort of chest like thing? Yeah, it's a board game. Let's immerse in this adventure. You against me. I give you a coin if you win, eh? What do you say? Uh, yeah, I suppose so. We're going to need a coin to fix the clock, and we need to go to winter time to find the mountain to find the great wizard. <laughs> uh, yeah, what are the rules? First to place three of the same figures in a diagonal, horizontal, or vertical line wins. We toss the machinery and see who begins. Are you in? Yeah, is it tic-tac-toe? Sounds like a game we used to play at school called tic-tac-toe. But why would you just give me the gold if I win? Time is gold and I'm very old. I've been around a long time. I just want to have a good time. I see. Well then, let's let's play. Okay then, here we go. Let's play a game of tic-tac-toe. I'm black then. Um, let's see. There we go. Okay, it's me going first this time. Let's see. Uh, I guess I'll start off in a corner. He goes there. That's fine. I'll go over there. And then if I hit the middle one, I think I've got it. Yeah, I've got it. There you go. Yes! Yeah, there you go. I've got a coin. So I guess that means I can I can pay the, the clock maker. Or the clock fixer. To fix the clock. Okay, let's do it again then. Do we get another coin if we win? There you go. I won again. Another coin! Okay, how many coins do we need? I don't know. Should we just, like, end this, I guess? Very well done, little creature. You're a master. Okay. All right. So I've got the co have I got two coins? Or have I just got the one? I think I've just got the one. I only need to win it the once. I think. Okay. Right. Let's give that to the clockmaker and see what he can do. So use with the clockmaker. Yes. Here, sir. Your golden coin. What's that? I haven't fixed any of your clocks. I want you to fix the clock. Yeah. You wanted a coin to fix the clock. Oh yes. But you have to offer me the job first. All right. Do it, and be polite. Oh, Sir Clockmaker, would you like to fix my clock in exchange for this piece of gold and in the name of, uh, time? I beg of you, accept my offer. Of course. That was an incredible job offer. Very passionate. Great. Let's go to the big clock and fix it. Okay. <laughs> Weird way of moving around. Uh... Let's just head back then, shall we? Up there? Yep. Let's follow him. Okay. How's it going? Hmm, you were right. The clock is broken. You can fix it, right? Of course. Just a second. Oh, shit. Yep. Whoa, 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 whoa. Were they shadows there? Anyway, it seems to be working again. What is it? It seems that somebody was playing a dirty game around this clock. What do you mean? I mean somebody broke it. It's immoral breaking a defenseless clock. Ugh. Why would somebody break it? Kamalas. Winter. Mountain Cotram. The stones. Many reasons, miss. Oh, uh, what are you talking about? I don't understand. Kamalas. The evil darkness. They work for Remor, the terrible black. And Kamalas are the only ones allowed in this land. The only evil we have around. It wouldn't surprise me. Remor wants the stones. But what I don't understand is... For what purpose? These stones are meaningless for him and his kingdom. And the stones are in wintertime. Is Remor a giant black monster with a goat mask? A dead goat mask? Yes. You know him? Yes. I think it's because of him I'm in this land. I'm a human, you know. Oh, a human! Now I understand. I also need the stones. They're my way back home. I hope it's not too late. <laughs> this is why you need to go into winter time and to go to Mountain Cotram. 
Yes, exactly. I have to talk with the Great Wizard and borrow the stones. Hmm. Well, it's fixed now. I'll give you something that will make it easy for you. Here. Oh. Is that like a little, a little pocket watch? It's a remote control for the clock. Fantastic. You'll be able to, uh, to travel into all four seasons in just a quick turn. But it's just a prototype, so it may not work if you're too far away. And remember, time is an infinite layered reality, so be careful. I'll be careful. Thank you very much. You're a very nice clockmaker guy. Please, call me Cogwind. Alright. I'm Fran, by the way. See you soon. Bye. And off he goes. Okay, let's, uh, let's test this out then. Okay, spring to summer. To autumn or fall, if you like. To winter time, where I'm fairly sure I saw some figures, some some shadows at some point. And then we go straight back to spring then, do we? Okay, pretty neat. Okay guys, I think this is where I'm actually going to end the video because I need to give my voice a rest. And for some reason, I keep doing these voices and uh, I'm beginning to regret it a little bit, especially on these long talking sections of the game. But uh, when we return, we will, I guess, go to Wintertime, see if we can find the Great Wizard on Mountain Cotram and see about uh, using the stones to get me home. What are the words that are coming out of my mouth right now? I'm... <sighs> oh, what an honour, Your Highness. Uh, by the way, I, I like your leaves. They're pretty. <laughs> the fuck is going on, honestly? And he has the stones that can open the... <laughs> Sorry, I, uh, I had a weird mental image then, but apparently he has the stones that can open the door. The Great Wizard lives there. Let's go. Okay. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, shit, yep. Whoa, 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 whoa. Were they shadows there? <laughs>